What's going on, Z Warriors? Mr. Waffles here, and today in this de uh, Dragon Discussion video, I'm going to be talking about why you should play DBZ. Now, this video is mainly directed towards uh, new players or players who heard about the game and had friends tell them about the game, but really weren't sure about, you know, if I should pick it up, if I should invest in it, should I even waste my time playing it? It's going to die in a couple of sets anyway, kind of thing. So, this video is mainly for you guys. So, I have five reasons why I think. Um, for new players or players who are on defense about playing the game should play the game and again we're in set five so the game is obviously doing well to be continuing this far we're in this you know with the cell saga and everything like that so you know we're getting pretty far into the, the storyline of the game and again we have seen a bunch of different combinations of NPs and everything like that so I just want to kind of keep it very brief and kind of talk lingo for those who like probably never really heard of the game or have some information about the game and Hopefully this would um, inspire you guys to at least give the game a chance and try it out. So, uh, reason number one why you should play the game is because uh, the game is very diverse. So, and a lot of other card games I've played, uh, you'd only have like one or two top decks. Um, sometimes just one for the most part. You would always have the other decks that can be contenders, but they still don't um, win as much as like the, the best deck that you might be playing in the format. Um, in DBZ, you know, for a while we had Krillin, Piccolo, Ginyu, uh, now 20, and even Turles kind of run through the fray. So, sure, you might think that's only just five MPs, but you got to also think that um, that's still five uh, pretty diverse um, uh, MPs that you can kind of play in the in the game. So, in this game, again, we have a lot of different combinations, and with every set that's being released, a lot of their, uh, sorry, a lot of other um, MPs and um, styles and everything like that get more support. So. This set, you know, I feel like Tien's going to be really good. He has a, more new name cards to his arsenal. So for those who are looking for, like, a nice way to have, like, a diverse meta where the, the game isn't stagnant or stale, again, try out DBZ. You have a lot of different combinations to choose from, um, and you can just mix and match. And yeah, I feel like there's a lot of sleeper decks and decks that um, people have probably have, like, tinkered with but haven't really fine-tuned to really make that threshold into the meta. So... We've seen it like with 20, no one, everyone knew 20 was good, but didn't really realize how good until like Tim and Phil um, did well with it at Worlds. So, you know, now you see 20 almost everywhere. Um, and then because of that, you know, you have Turles, um coming in as a response to that. And Turles is, or at least Ruthless Turles is very good right now. So, I mean, you, you might think like, uh, if you're like used to just like one kind of deck format, you know, this isn't that kind of game. You know, you have a lot of diversity for sure. And more to come as people kind of figure out more combinations and things like that. Uh, reason number two is because of creativity. Um, now, that's the main reason why I like playing card games is because I want to be able to uh, think and always brainstorm. I love it when uh, players come to me or, you know, we talk and they discuss ideas like, oh, you know, I have this idea for this. And just like that light bulb to like really uh, flicker on is a good indication that, you know, you're playing a good card game. Um, just to have that diversity to have that, um, that that ability to even think of a deck is important. Stupid phone. So, again, you know, we have a bunch of different combinations. Um, we have your main personality, which for those who are familiar with other card games like Vanguard or something like that, um, that's like your, I guess, your main character. And then you have a style and all the, all the cards kind of flow around those two combinations. So... You know, we have six different styles. Sorry. Uh, here's my... There we go. Six different styles. And uh, we also have um, two um, masteries for each style. So you can imagine all the different combinations. So you can go with Red Goku and this one mastery and Red Goku and another mastery. And they can be two totally, totally different builds. So just to have that um, aspect and diversity alone, which is only going to expand and increase more as more sets come out, is going to be um, a really good thing. Again, as a card uh, card gamer or card player, I should say, I really enjoy um, brainstorming and always tinkering. You know, it just helps with my creative flow. And, you know, I play music. I like to draw and stuff like that. So, you know, creativity is just like in me and for a lot of people as well, you know. And if you're playing a game, you know, you want to have that ability to Think about certain combinations and decks. That's the whole point of playing a card game, because otherwise you're just wasting money on buying packs because everything in the card pool is irrelevant if you're only going to play one certain type of deck. So I think it's important for um, 
you know, creativity being a card game and DBZ offers a lot of that and is always just going to grow uh, exponentially more and more. So if you're looking for uh, a creative card game, you know, DBZ is definitely that game for you. So that's my second reason. Um, my third reason, I know my parakeet's making a, a lot of noise right now, but uh, shh. Thank you. So uh, uh, anyway, um, the third reason is um, the community. Uh, I love the community. I love the DBZ community. Again, um, sure, like, you know, you have a, a, your ranch and stuff like that, but if you're looking for a nice community where uh, players, you don't have to worry about players trying to steal your stuff or kind of being like just dirt bags about everything, DBZ is definitely that community. Uh, I can tell you so many times where I've been in other card games and the community was just horrible, it was just asinine. Um, it was probably like one of the worst communities ever because left and right things are getting stolen. Um, left and right, you know, fights are breaking out or this is happening, you know, and that's what happens when you have a card game filled with little boys instead of men, you know? So, you know, the DVD community is a lot older and, um, you know, I feel a lot more mature in that aspect. Every event that I've went to or participated in, or even just, um, sit on the sidelines, I've always seen it run very smoothly. Uh, no one breaking out into some crazy fight, no one. Um, having like an insane amount of stuff stolen because we all respect each other and I hopefully that that continues to grow as uh, the game progresses you know I just want to see the community just get better and better like again you have your differences which is fine but at the end of the day you know I met a lot of cool people from the Peñas, Stad Miller, Scott Dashy, my locals you know TJ, Mark, Steve, Parker, Fash Bender the legend you know and you know also Frankie Lake shout out to Frankie Lake you know, a lot of these people that I've met through various events and, you know, sure you win and lose and you, you get upset, but usually like when I play this game, you know, I'm more upset with myself because of maybe the decisions I've made because this game takes a lot of decision making more so than my opponent thinking, oh, you like you luck sack, you this and that. Um, so the community is awesome. A lot of people are always willing to help. So if you're just starting up and you might need some comments or uncommons or something like that, you know, the game, oh, sorry, the community is more than willing to pitch in. I, I can tell you I have a lot of cards and um, I don't mind just giving them away. So for someone who's like starting out, you know, wants some some cards, I have a bunch of comments and uncommons. I'd be like, here, you know, take these, you know, get some friends involved, you know, and anything like that to help you. Um, and that's the main reason, you know, you want to be a place where you're welcome. There's no point of being uh, in a community where it's toxic and you always have to wear your book bag um, in front of you because you're afraid that someone's going to steal it or some kind of crazy shenanigans are going to happen. You know, with DBZ, I never had to worry about that and everyone was respectful. Um, good games all around and people were just mature. So my third reason, again, if you're looking for an awesome community, you know, a bunch of great people, uh, definitely be a part of the DBZ community. We'll welcome you. Warm hugs and cookies. Um, my fourth reason for... Uh, why you, someone should play the DBZ card game is because it offers, uh, <clears throat> trying to just word this in, the, I guess, the correct way. Um, well, it's just fun. It's, you know, it's just the bottom line. It's a fun game where you can just play every combination, every deck. You have a bunch of different combinations and decks. And it's just fun to play because every game doesn't end up the same way. Like the way you kind of program and um, create your deck it doesn't run the same way every single game which is a good thing because it's not like you're going to open up this hand and then you know what to do and it does it all the time you know um, my ruthless turtles which I was playing towards the end of set four um, it doesn't always function the same way I don't always enter and then try to beat face sometimes I try to build a board presence because I run a drill package and stuff as well so you know the game it's always different. It's always different variables being exchanged left and right. And you never feel like when you play a deck, it's going to do the same thing all the time. Because sometimes you might get the, um, not draw the cards that you might need or cards that help your deck function. You know, uh, when I play like Ruthless Willow, I'm not always going to draw like the right, right punch or something like that. Um, so it just offers um, a lot of flexibility and interchangeability within the game where you can just always play a game and you always have like some crazy outcome at the end like sometimes you you know certain decks are just kind of better than others but it's not like um every game is going to be like a landslide blowout you know sometimes it might come down to a 
life card or two differential. So, uh, again, if you're looking for a really fun game, I definitely highly suggest DBZ. It does have a, a, a high learning curve for the most part compared to other card games, but um, it pays off in the end once you get the flow of it and things like that. And um, the last reason why you should play the DBZ card game, reason number five, is because the game's cheap. You know, compared to other card games, this game has easy, um, this easy investment. You know, you don't have to worry about your cards getting hit on a ban list or something like that happening. At least not now, but, you know, I'm just thinking as of now, we don't really have a ban list or a rotation, so your cards are going to hold its value. Um, what's really important about that is every game and in every card game has expensive money cards, but uh, in this game, the money cards kind of hold out over um, a, a long period of time. Uh, th this card game offers a lot of, uh, I should say, um, elasticity, basically. So meaning that if I'm buying a person a $100 card, um, let's say Heroic Energy Sphere, what it is is a, is a, an event for heroes only that cancels um, the uh, effects of another event. And you can use it um, when your opponent plays an event. And they also have a villain one. So let's say if I'm you know, getting into the game, I really want to invest in play, and I want to pick up some spheres, you know, I spend $100, I get, let's say, a hero one, um, I can use that hero sphere in any with any hero personality that I make in my deck with, so whether I play Goku, Hero Vegeta, Trunks, uh, Yamcha, etc., you know, I can put that sphere in every single hero deck I, I play. With other card games, um, usually when you buy, like, a money card, it's... You know, $150 for like, um, and especially in other card games, they have a lot of archetypes. So, you know, you spend $150 or $100 some dollars plus on one card that you might need three of. And it only works for that archetype. So if another set comes out, you have a different archetype. I can't really put that card into the other archetype because it just wouldn't work. So, and then I also have to worry about the card either getting banned or, uh, or hit on the list. So my money doesn't stretch as far as it does in DBZ. So when you buy a money card, like dig, I'll Dig Your Grave or Define Challenge, the card, because of the freestyle access, that grants it access to whether you're playing hero or villain, doesn't matter what style. And that's very important in a card game because you want to be able to make sure that your money lasts. You know, a lot of people think like spheres are expensive and stuff, but coming from other card games, you know, the money that I spend on a sphere or any high-end card is going to hold its value throughout because it's either if it's a freestyle, I can play it in any deck, and if it's good, hence why it's expensive, I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna just stay at that at that level for the most part. Um, any hero or villain type cards that are really expensive, I can put them in any hero deck or any villain deck. So it really doesn't. Um, I don't really feel like I was ever wasting my money or um, I didn't get the value as much as I needed because this game has that kind of return on investment. You know, you put this money into it. And then you definitely get it back out and some because the cards will probably only get better as other sets come out. So, you know, if you're looking for a really nice, fun um, game where it's really cheap, again, DBZ is definitely that game. And it's not a pay-to-win game, which I also enjoy. Uh, meaning that I don't have to buy the expensive cards to win every single game or better my chances. Um, sure, having like spheres or some other high-end cards are good. But it doesn't also guarantee um, victory every single game kind of thing. Or a landslide victory throughout where it's like, okay, because I have the sphere in my hand, you just lost 60 life cards or something like that. It's never the case. Where in other card games, you know, the more money that you spend, um, that's pretty much pay to win where you, you know, you have to spend the, the money to make something good. Whereas DBZ is not like that at all. So if you're looking for a game where, hey, I don't have to spend that much money, I don't really need to buy high end cards to make my deck. Um, viable, definitely pick up DBZ for sure. So if there's any other, you know, questions or suggestions, you know, you guys have for me, um, just let me know in the comments down below. And I really think, um, you know, DBZ is really picking up on the up and up, you know, especially with ARG having all these tournaments. So, you know, I suggest you guys just try it out. I mean, ARG is doing some stuff. Um, we have OP announcements that'll be coming soon. So if you're looking for like a cheap, fun, diverse, creative, and good community kind of game, Definitely try out DBZ. So until next time, Z Warriors, Mr. Waffles, out!